What is up, everyone, and welcome to episode 54 of the Trainer Scoop podcast. After a brief little hiatus here, I'm back with a guest that I'm really excited to, to talk to for this episode. Hope you all enjoy it. Um, today's guest is George Bright, correct? That's right. That's right. Well, David, thanks for having me. Um, you know, we kind of uh, got in contact on social media. Love your content. So yeah, thanks for having me. Yeah, man, I appreciate you. Uh, on that same social media vein, George is a stellar, absolutely fantastic content creator on Instagram. And I, I saw some of your YouTube videos too, man, and they were looking really good as well. Well, thank you. Thank you. Um, be honest with you, I haven't been on YouTube that much because like, you know, we only have that much time, <laughs> but yeah, maybe, maybe sometime in the future. Yeah. I was just thinking I dropped a YouTube video today and it is a, it is a grind. Like there's got to be probably five to 10 hours in every YouTube video if you do it right. And it, oh, it yeah. adds up. It does. And the, you know, the fun, the funny thing about YouTube is that I remember I was like, man, like, I don't know how this works, but for my understanding, if it gets longer than like 18, 20 minutes, the likelihood, likelihood of people like finishing watching it, it's like drops quite a lot. So I'm like, man, I could do so much content. I could, I could maybe do an hour mm -hmm. plus of content here, just talking about stuff, you know, why we do this, why we do that. And you can't even go that in depth in there. So it's kind of frustrating too. Oh yeah. It's a, it's a different beast, but um, I mean, from what I've seen, you really have that Instagram niche nailed down. Uh, so I guess before we get too far into it, I'd really just appreciate hearing your backstory. Tell us a little bit about yourself, you know, where you're from, how you got into fitness and, uh, and how it's taken you to where you are now. Sure thing. Well, I mean, it's kind of, um, I suppose that we can start from the beginning. Um, so I, I was born in Venezuela. Um, like it's right beside Colombia. I don't know if you, if you, if you know exactly where it is. Mm -hmm. So I was born there. Um, I, I was raised there since I was uh, 17 years old. And pretty much my entire life, I've been doing sports, mostly swimming. Uh, I spent swimming my entire life. I think that I, um, I had my, my parents had videos of me swimming before learning to walk because that was like my whole thing. Um, I do it. I did it at a high level for years and years. Now, my issue was that even though I was putting putting in the same effort. I was doing the same amount of work as my peers. I was always the fat kid in the room, right? So it was kind of uh, hard to see myself beside my, my friends. And sometimes, you know, you always receive great critics, you know, and as a kid, you don't know how to receive them. So it took a little bit, but, um, you know, slowly but surely once I took responsibility and started to actually take action towards my nutrition training, even though it was not perfect, I changed my situation. Um, but yeah, that was ar around the time that I had to move here to the States uh, back in 2017 or late 16, early 17. And uh, yeah, once I got here, I pretty much said, you know, we're starting from scratch. Um, and I was like, okay, this is a new beginning. I got my coaching certification. Uh, I started coaching people and uh, yeah, I mean, I think one, th one thing took to another and yeah, it really became like really super uh, into the, you know, evidence-based approach. And yeah, that's pretty much like the long story short. Yeah. Yeah. Awesome, man. And I can definitely tell that evidence-based approach in all of your content. I think the, the way you can give practical advice and practical tips to the people using that evidence-based approach is what really stuck out to me. Um, and real quick, how I kind of found out about you, man, one of my clients sent a post ab about you that you made a year and a half ago. Like it was a long time ago. And he was like, I feel like, uh, you know, you could do similar things to, to him. And I was like, yeah, uh, that's what I'm trying to work toward. And then I, I've checked out the YouTube, um, and I remember you were doing a prep for, was it like the summer shredding show? Yes. A couple of years back. Yeah. So, 
Yeah, that was actually my first prep uh, or my second prep, my second ever prep um, that was for summer shredding. It was honestly the best experience I've ever had competition wise. Um, you know, to me, prepping is not just competing, it's the whole process. Um, have you have you ever prepped before to compete? By, by I haven't, sense? man. I have not. Dude, I highly recommend it. Mm -hmm. Because I don't know why, but I think that there's a point, and I think most competitors can, can reflect to this, that you don't even have to think about it. You just wake up in the morning, you get work done, and it's not just fitness. Like most people think, oh, because you're prepping your performance on in you know your life, work, etc., is gonna drop. Actually, improves so much because everything, every single, every single space, at least in in the things that I do daily, are are you you become almost like a robot. You, you I'm, not, I'm not sure if I'm I'm explaining myself. No, it's, I know exactly. It's really, a, a, yeah, highly you, recommend. Highly recommend. It. Yeah, yeah. Even as I was finishing up that diet, it just seemed like I was so locked into the process. You know, I was laying my clothes out, getting my meals ready for the next day, getting everything organized, and and that sense of like process and uh, preparation is really it's really satisfying. And I think it just helps, like you said, it helps you kind of excel in other areas of life. Your work productivity just the, the way you kind of operate in general. So I'm, I'm planning on doing a show in 2023. So I'll be able to, I'll be able to relate a little bit better once it gets serious, but yeah, that's a really cool sentiment, man. Dude, let's do it. I mean, don't think too much about it and just uh, my biggest recommendation, enjoy the process. Like mm -hmm. a lot of people get so caught up on the fact that, Oh, I have to step on stage. That's what it should be focusing on. No, you should be focusing on one date at a time. You know, the same way that you approach a cut, like you have, a, let's say that you set a cut, you say 16 weeks, this is where I want to be. Once the plan is in place, stop focusing on it. Like write that down and just focus on the day-to-day -day tasks. Like if you do that and you learn to enjoy the process, you know, that's what makes the, the biggest difference. Yeah, that was great. I'm gonna make a sign, a sound bite out of that one, man. That was a, that was a great. Um, <laughs> I want to I want to take it back a little bit before before we get into what's going on currently for you. So you mentioned you kind of had that uh, you know you were a little bit more a uh, little bit more over or what's the word heavier or overweight uh, compared to your peers. So what were some of the initial actions you took to kind of overcome that? Uh, because I came from a pretty similar spot where I felt like I wasn't as um, I wasn't on the same level as all of my friends. They were all, you know, the star, the star athletes. And I was just kind of a little bit more chunky. Uh, so I'm definitely interested to hear how you kind of flipped that situation. For sure. So the thing is, my story is not, was not, I mean, the way in which I progressed, I would have, to, I have to say that I made a lot of mistakes along the way. Um, I remember that I started to try to lose weight as I was starting to go through puberty. Uh, per, 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 uh, how do you say it? Puberty. Puberty. Yeah. Puberty. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Puberty. By the way, if I say anything I, in English like it's not perfect, let me know. Oh, you're uh, good, man. You're good. Um, so yeah, I did not make the mess the best choices because of that as well. Like my thought process was out of the roof. I when I remember that I went with a nutritionist and she would tell me, uh, yeah, so actually she got pretty much told me that meat was the worst that I had to stop eating meat because that was, it caused cancer and this and that. And I, you know, I was a 15 year old kid. I was like, <laughs> okay, so mom, no more meat. So I pretty much went from eating anything to eat just veggies um, and no control around it. Like I literally lost, geez, like 60 pounds in one year without even trying. It was crazy. Yeah, I have, uh, I went from super overweight to super underweight, I had no muscle. And yeah, I think that that was pretty much the hardest. I would say that I was much happier when I was overweight because, um, once I got super skinny, I didn't have any, I, I didn't have strength for anything. I didn't, I wasn't even able to 
you know, do most things that people do during the day. Like I felt, example, I remember that I, there were some birthdays that I was invited to and I would not go for multiple reasons. Like I did not feel comfortable uh, just being around people. I didn't feel like strong enough to be around them or I don't know, my, things of the, like things like that. Mm-hmm. And also when it came to the water as well, I s- quit swimming because my body could not handle cold water. That's that's how bad it was. So I lost a lot of, because I've lost so much weight. So yeah, I, I mean, be honest with you, I think that the gym saved my life in, in that sense. Once it started to, you know, actually shift my mindset towards, I don't want to be weak. I want to be strong. I want to actually feel and, and be strong. Um, and then I started lifting and, yeah, that's that's pretty much how I started uh, getting into the gym, into the habit. Wow, that is pretty wild, man. Sixty pounds being that age is um, that's that's quite a change. My uh, my weight loss was similar, but not that same magnitude. I didn't really deal with any of the um, I guess the the feelings of like weakness or you couldn't deal with like the cold water so that's how you know it's next level that's yeah a- yeah i think I may, perhaps maybe you felt that like that's something sometimes a lot of uh, not everybody but a lot of people that i work with at, at least in myself even when you get to a really low body fat percentage like you you're kind of second second guess that like should i do i really want to get in that pool should, should, like you really get that sensitive mm-hmm. uh, i don't know if you if you ever felt that that way yeah i think mine was more on like a social level uh i lost yeah i lost about like 35 pounds going from about 160 to 125 when i was 15 and so like i don't know if uh you'd be familiar with this so like we have the homecoming dance right in in high schools here it's like the the big fall dance that you go to with your with your classmates and i just like didn't want to go my freshman year because I felt like I was like, my shirt was super baggy. Like it was just, you know, I, I didn't want to go. I didn't want to look stupid. Um, and man, like, I, did you ever encounter feelings like that too, where it was like a, a tough age, you know, to, to go through that huge transformation? Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. I mean, I went from the thing is my entire life. I mean, when I was overweight, I didn't want to go to anywhere because I was like, be honest with you. It's really funny to me hearing here, at least in the, in the States, when I hear people complaining about bullying or things of that nature, because man, when you come from, and most people from, you know, Spanish speak, speaking um, uh, places, uh, countries, we know what bullying is. Like bullying there, at least in Venezuela, bullying is part of the culture. Mm-hmm. Like everybody's going to, this, like we pretty much destroy each other almost like and if since I was really overweight and then I became really skinny it was like from one stream to the other so yeah I totally relate to you totally relate yeah just out of curiosity where do you live now so I'm currently in Florida Florida oh. Cape Coral nice nice okay awesome dude um we are. so going back to like our first interaction on social media, you made a post talking about that. And it's much more clear now that we have the context, now that I have the context, um, because I saw a lot of people ripping you in the the comments for talking about genetics. And they were like, dude, you don't have that bad of genetics. And I was like, you know, maybe he doesn't have the worst genetics, but I think it just missed. Like the point of this post wasn't all about complaining. It was about bettering your situation. And a lot of people missed it. I missed it a little bit now that I know exactly where you came from. A lot of people missed it even worse than I did. So does that ever frustrate you when people are just like, dude, you're not, you're not that bad off. Like, like you, you have it pretty good. Uh, How do you deal with that, man? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, um, well, first off, I remember that the first interaction that we had was that post. I remember that you commented and you were actually one of the most like actually open-minded people in that comment section it was like man this is crazy like i'm literally just trying to make a post a positive post about and they you know, ripped you. They, they were just crazy but yeah i mean i think the biggest thing is 
and more so with weight loss because I think that genetics, yes, they, it absolutely plays a big role when it comes to body composition, but more so when it comes to gaining muscle, mm. you know, mm-hmm. when it comes to weight loss, it's a different story. Like I'm a big believer that the vast majority of people, if they actually wanted to, and they took the steps necessary, they will lose the weight. Like anyone, everyone can lose weight in a calorie deficit. Not everyone can put on weight, can put on muscle, sorry, in a calorie surplus. Mm-hmm. See what I mean? Yeah. So I think that a lot of people, they, they just, and nowadays, like everybody wants to be uh, almost like a victim, you know? And I'm not, tr- I, I mean, I'm sorry, like, I'm not trying to offend to offend anyone, but I'm saying it because I went through that transformation. And I remember that it wasn't until I actually took responsibility of my situation that, you know, perhaps having a bowl of cereal at night before going to bed uh, wasn't the best idea that maybe eating like four times the amount of food that my, my family members were eating no, was not the best idea. You know what I mean? Once you take responsibility, you actually just take small steps, then things change. But for things to change, you have to change and you have to stop blaming, you know, outside factors. That's, that's, that's my whole thing. Yeah. 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 That's a great point, man. That, that just brings me back to being like 14, 13 years old and just eating a whole box of cereal while watching TV at night. (laughs) And my mom would be like, (laughs) You know, this is like not free. You, you, you just ate like $5 worth of cereal. <laughs> I was like, sorry. <laughs> but um, it, man. what are some practical steps that people who might feel a little stuck, you know, I think you, you had such a good point. Like if you take accountability, you can lose that weight and get to a good spot where you can be proud of your physique. You might not be crazy jacked, but you can at least feel good about yourself. So what are some good initial steps that people can take to, uh, to start that process of really owning that, uh, their actions and, and improving their, their health, their body image, all that. Sure. So, uh, the, the first thing that I do is when I work with people or the basic uh, recommendations that I do is, you know, just look at your life and see, okay, what is one thing that I can change and that I can be consistent with? You never want to start by, you know, making a life, like complete lifestyle change. That's not going to work. That's not sustainable. You know, the same reason why we, we as trainers, and I know that you do the same, you don't recommend any type of, you know, fat diet, restrictive diet by any means, because it's not sustainable. So find something that you can start doing right now, not later, not tomorrow, not next week, right now. Okay. What I can do right now, so perhaps eating more whole foods, that's a starting point. Um, Eating maybe a a serving of veggies with each meal, you know, that's that's another thing you can do that. Um, Drinking more water, getting more sleep, um, making a routine, you know, that's that's super important. Most people, most people that are overweight, I found out, I found at least for myself and for my the experience that I've had with clients is these, a lot of people, they just don't have structure, you know, but once you have structure, routine, okay, where, when am I going to sleep? When am I waking up? What am I doing? Once you have that structure, then you can start integrating things little, little, you know, little by little add more uh, healthy habits. But yeah, yeah, I would start with by taking it one step at a time, starting small and then increasing over time. Mm -hmm. That's spot on. That was crazy that you mentioned the structure aspect. I had a, I took a walk with one of my friends last night. It was like 45 minute long walk. And that's basically all we talked about is the importance of having that structure. You know, we were reflecting on some of our friends that aren't quite as structured and you'll hear not, not to hate, but you'll hear people that don't have a lot of structure. You'll hear them complain about their situation and they're often like a little unhappy, but And it's not an easy thing to start, but once you get started, those little changes, like you said, that momentum starts rolling, one small change becomes a a bigger change. And then before you know, after a couple months, you're cruising and you're doing great. So that's a, that's a very good point to, to start slowly with the structure. And then over time it'll grow. Nice. Yeah. 
Yeah, because the thing is, you can't add anything if you don't have any type of structure. It's like, okay, so you want to change, like, what's your schedule? Yeah, so on the weekdays I wake up, like, I have I have people that sometimes they, they work with me and they're like, they work like 48 hour shifts, right? And during the 48 hour shifts, they're always working. And during the days off, guess what happens? They wake up at 2 p.m. They go to sleep at 12 a.m. They just live crazy lives. So I'm like, so perhaps we can change that a little bit. Just like, let's live a healthy life through those days and also make the, the days that you're working like a little more, having a, like a little of a habit of what you're going to eat, when you're sleeping, you know, that sort of thing. But everything start, starts with, with a routine, in my opinion. Yeah, yeah, I agree. Um, another question to kind of switch up topics on you that I think it still relates to structure is your social media presence, man. As I mentioned at the beginning, it's really good. Your, your content, it is informative, educational, and it's, it's consumable too. Like, I think it's funny. It's like, it's got a theme to it. Um, it's very well structured. So how did that start? How did you grow it? Because you have a really big following, man. We're at like, what, 106,000 followers on your account? Like something crazy. Yeah, 100, 106. Uh, and yeah, it's been going down quite a bit. But, you know, we, the social media game is it's a matter of consistency more than anything. So when did that start? When did you, um, when did you really say, like, I'm going to do this? And what were some of the thoughts that you had? How have you grown over the years as well? Oh, sure. So uh, I think it started when I, uh, I remember that I, when I became a coach, you know, when I became a coach, I remember that I moved. The thing is, I think the biggest driver for me was uh, moving into the States. Um, we came here, man, and it was not planned. Like I literally had noticed that we were moving here. No joke a day before, two days before, two days before, actually. What? Yeah. That's why I, I want to hear that story, maybe for another podcast, but I want to hear yeah. that. Yeah, so that, that's why I was like, man, where to start? Where to start the story? Because, um, you know, it was not planned. So, you know, I, I won't go too deep into it, but it was a really hard moment for us as a, as a family. So I moved here, um, you know, we're starting from scratch my dad and my mom who were um they had multiple businesses they, they were business owners they lost pretty much everything due to the uh the, the regime that, that was in place that is still in place so we started from scratch i see my mom i see my dad they're putting in the work i'm blessed enough that i was able to do my last year of high school here and then i was like you know i gotta take on this opportunity i I remember that a lot of people told me, dude, you'll never, um, like, you'll never learn English. And if you do, you'll have an accent that no one's going to understand. It was like, okay, well, we'll see. So I, that was a, like a little challenge that I put to myself. I was like, I'm putting myself in situations to learn um, and, you know, put, putting myself in into challenges. So I remember going back to the, the social media thing. Um, I became a coach and then I was like, okay, I'm, I'm a coach. I know what, what in-person coaches uh, can get to make. And uh, that's not what I, what, what I see myself doing long-term. Also, I wanna be able to impact not just one person or two, like being an in-person coach is awesome. And I love it because like I train my little brother and it's awesome to be, to be able to correct them in you know the little things, but you can do that, or you can just you can only have so much impact, yeah. you know. So I was like, okay, how can can I expand that by doing online coaching? And so I started to just consume, you know. At that point, I was like just consuming as much content as possible. Um, my main sources were uh, Jeff Nippard. I remember back in the day, two seventeen, Jeff Nippard. Uh, coach Eugene, I don't know if you know the guy. Eugene Tio. Um, what? Eugene Tio. Yes, Eugene Tio. Yeah, Eugene yeah. Tio. Um, funny enough, I I I heard about Mike. 
much later, but for other reasons that I was like, I, I don't know, maybe we can touch on that later, but I started to listen to R.P. Strand, Mike Isertel, um, and then I started to just try to implement that into myself and then making content that is um, consumable to the day-to-day -day person. Like if you start to talk about periodization to Bob who goes to work and just wants to get in shape, is this person going to get anything out of out of the post? I don't think so. So you, you kind of have to speak it in a different language. And yeah, I mean, I think that that's just like how it started. That's really impressive, man. So uh, correct me if I'm wrong. You didn't you didn't go on to college or, or any other like higher education beyond uh, high school. Yes, I did. I actually did my AA on um, art here in, um, in Cape Coral. Okay, got you. Interesting combination. Okay. Just out of my own curiosity too, um, I like to, to add random questions in the mix. What, are, what, are, what oh. is one topic that you're like particularly interested in learning it right now? Well... Um, as a coach, I'm always, you know, learning, and I think you relate to that. Uh, I'm super, super into the exercise science uh, atmosphere. Um, I want to optimize my training and therefore the training of my clients as much as possible. Um, nutrition as well. Nutrition is a big topic. Um, and yeah, I think that'd be uh, it for now. I think there might be a couple of uh, other things that I'm really interested in, but uh, that's what it comes, you know, comes out more into more. That's more related to to fitness. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Is there any particular thing in nutrition or uh, or training that you're that you're like fascinated with? Like for me, for example, I'm uh, really interested in learning about peaking for like a bodybuilding competition. I was um, reading up on a study that. Uh, Brett Contreras, Chris Barricat, a couple other authors put out. Um, mm -hmm. Jared Feather and Mike did one, of course, a video about that. And also uh, a younger guy who's about, are you like 23, 24, 25? 23. 23. Yeah. So a guy that's about our age. I don't know if you've seen him. His name is uh, Dylan Gwen, bodybuilder. Dylan, Dylan McCartney. Is his... Yeah. Yeah. You Wait, probably... Dylan McCartney, is... does he work with him? Uh, he worked with Jared for a time, but now he's like self-coached. Is it? Wait, Dylan? Of course, yes, I know the yeah, guy. He yeah. he's a huge. The thing is, <laughs> funny enough, I I was like, like young. I was like, when you see the guy, you're like, no, this guy must be in his forties. So <laughs> yeah, you told me you was twenty five. I said, what the fuck, Dylan? I thought you were thirty five. Yeah. Uh, because I'm yeah, twenty five. Yeah. I'm like, wow. Um. Yeah, but but Dylan just put out a podcast with one of the authors on this uh, meta analysis peaking paper. Really good podcast for anybody listening. It's high level. Go check them out. So that's like one area that I'm particularly fascinated in. Is there any any particular area, or are you just always kind of open to to broad learning in inside the the field? Man, so be honest with you, um, I I'm very intrigued with just optimizing uh, muscle gains. Mm -hmm. you know because i think that like yes prepping is cool and be honest with you i really like competing mm -hmm. but i think the biggest thing is uh, to, for me is progress and when it comes to fitness if you want to progress or you know bodybuilding you want to grow and growing as a natural becomes harder and harder and harder the more advanced you are so therefore you want to learn like i'm i'm always consuming stuff and um there's always it's funny enough that i'm now at uh, this stage that i'm in my fitness career and i can say that my training and my approach to training is so dialed in that it's really really good but still has room for improvement and i know that um so yeah i mean that's something that i'm su super interested in yeah nice nice i'm right there with you man i'm always looking to to take it up a next level and I think, you know, like we're, we're doing a good job uh, by keeping an open mind and, and sticking with uh, great sources like the people that you mentioned, Jeff Nippard, RP, uh, 
Eugene Tio, you know, all those guys, they, they just continuously refine the process and then um, we learn from it and, and try to pass that on as well. Um, I got one more content related question for you before we kind of move on and switch gears again. Um, you know, like I said, your, your content is really engaging. It's really informative. So how do you go about brainstorming ideas for the content? You know, you deliver things in such a good way that gets a, a good point across and just, at least for me, I enjoy it. So, so what are some of your thought processes as you're creating the content? Well, well, first off, thank you, man. I appreciate it. Um, and the thing is, when I make content, I like not my the, the way in which I make content now is not the same as I made content in the past. And although it's similar, is the 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 way in which I approach it now is by asking myself, okay, I imagine that I'm speaking to the type of person that I want to work with as a as a coach. So like I try to niche down my content as much as possible like okay what is who is the, the person that i'm i'm trying to work with what are his problems what are the things that he wants to accomplish uh what are the uh the solutions that i might be able to bring bring to the table and based on that i make the content that i that i make so and I always i try to make it as um as original as possible because uh, another thing that I see a lot of people, a lot of coaches in my my niche per se, they do is they put a lot of motivational stuff and like you know almost like, uh, you know just the dream outcomes type of thing like motivational stuff or how to reach X physique. I'm like, no, people actually want solutions. So I try to bring the evidence based approaches, the best practices possible, to to this in. in place them as solutions to those problems. So that's kind of how I go to when it comes to making content. And I can tell you, it just gets easier the more you do it. Like once you know exactly who you're speaking with, it's almost like, okay, you know already what to do. Yeah, yeah. Sorry for all my YouTube YouTube viewers that just saw my snap. My, uh, my cat is clawing at the door right now. And I'm like, God, you got to chill. I'm trying to do a podcast. Um, that is so funny and uh i mean it, it fits exactly you know why you're doing so well i watched like an hour-long lecture on sunday because i i was thinking over this past weekend like i need to revamp my content i've just had a, a dry spell so i watched like an hour-long lecture and it i wrote down some of the highlights it's literally right there taped on the wall and it's almost exactly what you said and you know my my points are who would you like to work with what's their problem how can you help them fix it? What makes you different? Stuff like that. And I think like you almost said the exact same things and I can, I can identify how you do those things in each post. And for everybody else out there, uh, I had this conversation with a friend recently as well, and she's getting into social media content. She's, uh, you know, she's just, she has the look, you know, she's jacked, she looks good. And she does a lot of the, you know, motivational stuff. I'm like, girl, you got to mix it up. We got to put some more value into this because, hey, we all know you look good, but how are we going to, how are we going to impact lives? How are you going to kind of really make a legacy for yourself, to be honest? Like, how are you going to um, make yourself different? And, and I think, you know, the way, the way that you framed that was really good, dude. Thank you, man. And, you know, David, one thing, um, first off, like your content is really freaking good like i went through some of your posts and you know just i want to tell you because a lot sometimes we need someone from the outside to tell us that like i i know for a fact that i myself even now i'm like always thinking man i think i, I could have done that better i think that i could have done this this way i could have and sometimes you know you just gotta give yourself a little bit of credit of credit mm -hmm. you know so yeah yeah just, give it up that's a great point. It's something I struggle with in general. Alrighty, everybody, we're back from our poverty Zoom break. We didn't pay for that pro subscription. We got 40 minutes and we're going to splice the two together. And that's all right. So, so yeah, man, I think we I think we covered social media pretty well. Um, definitely got some good takeaways for the people. But I'm really interested in to delving into your coaching business as well, because, you know, uh, I was talking to to someone that I recently met and they were like, oh man, that seems to be like the hot thing to do right now. And I'm like, yeah, it sounds pretty alluring. And a lot of people are kind of like hopping on the bandwagon, 
but doing it well is a whole other story. So in your business, in your practice with clients, George, what are some things that you think are, are valuable to, to tell to the people if they're looking to, to kind of get into coaching and, and grow their business as well? Sure. So, um, and this is for people who are looking to maybe possibly start. I know. Yeah. I know. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So my, the first thing that I'd say is uh, first, um, of course, you need to, uh, I think this is like, I sh we shouldn't even have to say this, but you should know what you're doing. Uh, there's a lot of people and it's just, it's just crazy. I have a lot of clients that come to work with me that come from working with people who, be honest with you, I, I'm like, well, what were you thinking? Like, <laughs> means you, you, you got to understand that this is a great uh, business to do. But remember that this is a service business and you are working with someone and you're taking a responsibility over the health and fitness of a person and of multiple people. So, you know, you have to take it seriously. This is not a hobby. This is not something you take uh, lightly. Yeah, you got to take it seriously. And uh, the second thing is once you know that you want to do it and that, you know, that's your passion, helping people reach your fitness goals then don't think it twice and take action. Because the thing is, just as when you start your fitness journey, if you just wait for the perfect time, like, uh, you know, it once I, uh, once I get this promotion or once I finish school or blah, 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 you'll never get started. Same thing as with fitness, the same advice uh, I would give to, to anyone starting to start a business, uh, a coaching business. Nice. When did, how old were you when you, when you started the coaching business? So I started when I was 19 and yeah, 19. Nice. Um, I was already, I already be, was already uh, coached people for a year and a half or a year or so in person. And uh, I remember that I started uh, with one of my best friends and he was my client for like, hold on for like six months um so i started with one person that i know that it's that that i pretty much met him almost you know weekly so i could have like real feedback um i would even i remember that i think the first few months i would ch charge nothing i would just work for free because i also had wanted you know i wanted to work with him as much as he wants to work with me at the moment um, and then, you know, slowly as I start to gain, um, you know, feedback, getting, getting feedback from, from that first person, you know, like, okay, yeah. So I think that you could have helped me a little more there. I think that maybe a little more direction here. Like once you get all that feedback, you can start integrating things into, into your coaching, uh, your own coaching business for all other clients. And then you can, you know, say, as you improve your, your systems and your process, then you can raise your price accordingly, but you got to start somewhere, you know? Yeah. I think it's, it's, it's safe to say, George, you're, you're built a little different, you know, being 19 and having that dedication and, and structure, it's not what typical people would do. I'm trying to think back to what I was doing at 19, which was, uh, I was addicted to the gym. I was lifting a lot. I was, uh, at college partying and, yeah, yeah, just way too much bullshit, we'll say. So uh, was that something that you ever had to navigate around or were you always just pretty zoned in on, you know, getting this up and going and, and running with it? Well, you know, I totally, I think that the biggest thing, man, and, you know, I sometimes I, I hear a lot of compliments that like that and I truly appreciate that. But I think that you, you know, just, Again, be a little bit easy on yourself because here's the deal. My situation is way different than other yeah. people. Yeah. Like, remember, I moved to this to this country. I was like, the first thing that I remember thinking is, wow. Like I was just mind blown because back in my country, you pretty much have one or, or like after you graduate from high school, you either become a doctor or a lawyer or you start a business. Dang. Those are your options. Like, <laughs> yeah or 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 of course or you do nothing and end up living 
and like in the street. So those are your, your four options, pretty much almost like. And here, damn, like you have so many options that it's almost like overwhelming. And most people get overwhelmed and don't, don't take action. But anyway, that's outside of the topic. Like you guys got to understand that you, you, you live here and it's like, it's normal. You don't have that urgency that most you know people maybe immigrants or things of uh, you know people like that have yeah. but yeah it pretty much was, i was like now that i'm thinking about it uh, being always like not the type of person who likes to go to parties or party that much yeah um and the reason why is because i i really have like really being like a really uh goal oriented hmm. i i don't know if you i think that you might relate to that a, a little bit because i think okay i can go to party but don't push it after 11 because the thing is my thing is after 11 then i st it start to mess to the next day the yeah. thing is what i think i always think like in the future so okay we're gonna party but guess what today is i don't know saturday sunday let's say it's sunday tomorrow's monday you gotta wake up and work how are you expecting on doing that properly if you're messed up or you know what i mean <laughs> so um, i love having good time but i always try to keep my goals as a, as a priority that's really, that's impressive, man. Oh, that's really cool. I think that's probably what, if you, if, if there's one big takeaway for me, is that mindset that, uh, that you have, do you think you got that from your parents? Do you see that in them? Or is that something you just kind of have always had in you? So I think it's a little bit of both. Yeah. Um, it's a little both because I've, I think it's also because my dad, uh, and I think that, yeah, I haven't mentioned this. My dad also, uh, he was a competitive swimmer back in the day. He actually, I think that he went, if he almost made it to the Olympics as, uh, as, a, as a swimmer for Venezuela. And then he passed that down to me. And my whole life, you know, just having that competitive um, sport mindset my entire life, it's it made a big impact. Um, also seeing my, you know, my parents just starting from scratch here, just like show me every day, like, damn, like you gotta work hard. Like you gotta work hard if you want uh, to change, to improve. And yeah, I think that's again, a little bit of both too. Yeah. What do they do now? So my mom is a realtor and uh, my dad is trying to start, a, we're starting on a, a new business. He, he was, and he's still uh, driving uh, driving trucks. Mm -hmm. uh, that's what made, made a, a lot of uh, income at the beginning. Yeah. And now they're trying to get out of it because being yeah. honest with you, it's not sustainable. Right, right. Hardworking people, I'm sure. Yeah, that's really cool. Best, you, of, luck, best of luck to him too as, uh, as he starts his own endeavor. Yeah, thank you. Thank you. I mean, he's, I think it's going to be well. He's, yeah. That's a talent, you know, when, once you, um, entrepreneurs and people who may, who make businesses, the good thing, the cool thing is that you can, if you're natural of it, you can lose it all, then you, you then you can build it back up. Mm -hmm. So yeah, man. It's a matter of yeah, dude, that's, that's really cool. And, um, on that same kind of thought process, how do you see your coaching business growing? Where do you, where do you want to take this vision? So yeah, I've been thinking quite a bit about it. Um, right now it's only me. And funny enough, uh, all the people, all the coaches, experienced coaches, and more experienced coaches, they always start. And after the first year, they already have like two, three assistant coaches. But I've, I've been kind of hesitant into it. Um, like, because I'm very picky with how I work with clients. I really want to make sure that the people I'm bringing in are going to put in the work um and are actually going to be there for the clients and take also also responsibility you know because uh, you are responsible of as i mentioned before of this per this person and you you can't just wash your hands which is something that you see a lot in coaching like a lot of people coaches would say oh it's not my fault it's the client yeah i don't know like the things sometimes you also have like i think that the best coaches and this is how you know if you are built to be a good coach is because good coaches also all, always, always, always question their own, um, their own processes. Mm -hmm. 
you know, because clients are clients and they always will have the same, the same uh, issues, uh, the same, um, let's say, um, things that they deal with. But we are here to provide the solution. And therefore, you have to know that that if it doesn't work, it's most likely because something in your um, in your process is not well. It's not. It's not. It's not as well as it could be. Mm-hmm. So yeah, um, I'm thinking of maybe in this this year, I'd like to maybe bring. I'm trying to get at least one more assistant coach, um, so I can take on more people, yeah. and then we'll see from there. We'll see from there. Yeah. Yeah, I like the plan, man. I think anybody would be lucky to uh, to be working under you from what you've accomplished so far at such a young age. So uh, who knows if any if anyone's uh, looking to dip their feet in, hit up George. He'll get you right. <laughs> well, <laughs> Let's see. Shoot, dude. I uh, I think I think um, you hit the nail on the head with kind of being reflective in your own coaching processes. When I was just getting going I think it was within the first like six months I had a guy that I worked with younger guy as well and um, thus far I had had really good results with all my clients but he just fell off the map and it was kind of one of those things where I was like hey man like do you want to keep going or no and he was like dude like honestly I'm just losing motivation and uh, I realized you know I told him like you know you've done a good job so far I'd love to have you back but um, if, if, if it's the time that we part ways, you know, no hard feelings. And in, in the following weeks and months, I was like kind of reflecting on that. Like, yeah, I could have definitely been a little better about, um, you know, following up, checking up on him, helping to make sure that everything was going smoothly. So maybe that wouldn't happen. And sometimes it's inevitable. It will happen. But like you said, yeah, yeah, yeah but exactly. it's always- I'm, I'm, I'm not saying, I'm not saying that code that, as a coach, you always have are the responsible for your clients not uh, not getting the, the outcomes that they want because in the end, you know, we as coaches, and this is something that I tell all my clients all the time. Like, I can give you the best plan in the world. I can give you them all the uh, the encouragement, all the support. Again, the plan, everything specific for you and your goals, but it's up to you to wake up and show up and make it happen. So that's something that you also want to, you know, reiterate to your client. Like, yes, I'm here. Yes, I'm going to help you. But it's your transformation. You got to do it. You got to put in the work. And I think that's that's also a big mistake that a lot of a lot of coaches do. They don't say that uh, quite a, a lot. Like that's that's something that at least I I always make sure to say during the first uh, coaching call, during even the first like. Before we do any 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 uh, before I get them on board or anything like that, uh, part of my um, let's say uh, filtering process because you like I personally don't want to take anyone. I only work with people that I know that I, that are going to show up. Mm-hmm. So part of the process is making sure that these people this this person is actually willing to put in the work because if the client is willing to put in the work, I can tell you we can get results. But that's that's the thing. You just gotta make sure that it's the right person as well. Yeah, yeah, good point. Yeah, that vetting process. I've learned that recently. It's important. It's important to do. And uh, if you want to avoid a lot of headaches, it's something that you should do. <laughs> yeah, dude. Well, yeah, I want to be conscious of your time. Um, you got time for like a couple fun questions? Maybe like three, four minutes. Yes, absolutely. Um, yeah, for sure. Sweet. All righty. What's your go-to, like, let's say everybody has a different preferred term. We'll just use the term cheat meal. If you're going to have like a meal where you're yeah. just like enjoying yourself, what's your go-to? My man, sushi. There's mm-hmm. nothing like sushi. Mm-hmm. Um, we have a place here in Cape Coral. Uh, it's called Jinza. It's all you can eat sushi but it's uh, gourmet. So mm. I've never seen anything like that. Yeah, uh, it's not... shitty sushi if it's all you can eat. <laughs> yeah, it's, like, it's just like all over. No, here's like, you actually, you go out during like lunchtime and that's like uh, the, the promotion they have from 11 to one or, two, or like 2 p.m. No, 11 to like 3 p.m. I think. And you order in everything you order, 
they if they bring it like super well presented and it's a, a good amount it's crazy it's a good amount so that's my go-to um and i only do that when i'm massing and yes those are not cheat meals those are free meals you know because yeah. we're not cheap there, you go. there <laughs> we go hey we're not cheating over here it's just freedom yeah, it's part of the plan it's part <laughs> of the plan right i like it dude have you done much traveling around the states thus far dude i wish i could say yes but i have not i i went to texas i've been in houston i've been in austin um where else i have been i think that that's it um i'd like to travel more though yeah, that's, yeah, yeah. that's one that was one of my new year's resolutions actually it was like you gotta travel more. You gotta explore more because so, there's so much to see around. So yeah, actually, I'm thinking, I'm currently prepping for a few shows, and one of the shows is actually in Vegas in December. So we'll see. We'll see because uh, it's a very short, short like a very short amount of time. So we'll see if I make it. That could be cool. That could be cool for yeah. sure. Yeah, dude. Um, I would say I would say Vegas would be a cool spot just to check out all the gyms because they have so many awesome gyms out there as well. Um, but yeah, yeah, that's cool. Dragon Slayer. The Dragon Slayer. I'm looking forward to seeing that gym for sure. Yeah, same here, man. Same here. All right, last question. Um, we'll we'll talk leg training on this last one. Um, hack squat or leg press? You got to choose one. What's it gonna be? I mean. When it comes to stimulus to fatigue ratio, I would say for me, leg press. Mm -hmm. Like they go for a hard set on leg press. It's just, and now I actually, I'm, I'm just thinking about it. Tomorrow I have a nasty leg session. I'm like, oh, Jesus <laughs> that's uh, how you uh, train into the prop proper intensity. Yeah. I mean, not saying that hack squats are bad, they, they're great. Uh, but, you know, if I put them on scale, I would have yeah. to so go with leg press. Yeah. Um, there are times, of course, when like I'm do I've been doing, let's say that I've been doing leg press for two mesos in a row. It's like, uh, I'm not feeling, I'm starting to like starting to get stale. And then I would go to my second best, which is hack squats. That's for sure. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, man. I'm with you. I don't have a great leg press at the gym right now. It's like it's too too much of an angle, but I'm trying to work around and figure out solutions. So, yeah, you it's got to be a leg great press. Hack squad, you have a great hack squad. Yeah, yeah. yeah. For the ones the that I Shit. I mean, that, is that a uh, what's the brand? What's the do you know the brand of that one? Yeah. So the hack squat is a Cybex, and the leg presses are hand. Yeah. 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 yeah Cybex, they humbled you so much. I remember <laughs> in roller. In a roller hack squat, I would do, I can do almost four plates per side, you know, rep range seven to 12, perfect. I would go on a Cybex and I was training with a, with a friend of mine. I, you might know him, Shimmy. Um, he appeared on a, on a, on a video for RP strain as well. Oh shit. I'll have to, uh, I've probably seen him. Yeah. So Shimmy, he lives here in, um, here in Florida as well. So I went to visit him. He has a Cybex. Mm. I literally fail after three reps. Of course, first time using it with like two forty fives and a and a and a twenty five in the first side. I was like, what damn, the hell? yeah, that, yeah, that machine is. is tough. Yeah, it is. it is. Well, dude, I really appreciate you coming on the podcast. I think we had a lot of value in this podcast, and it was just good to get to know you a little bit more, man, and talk more. Um, I definitely want to get you on to tell some stories and to uh, explore some other topics down the road. So um, if, if you'd be down, it'd be great to have you again. And, Absolutely. Uh, yeah, before you head out to your other call, is there any anything you'd like to plug, any uh, places where the people can find you that you're trying to promote, anything like that? Um, sure, yeah. So I'm pretty much just very active on Instagram at the moment. I found that... Um, let's say uh, multitasking is not the best for me. Like I've, I just focus on one social media right now, which is Instagram. Uh, you can find me at Jorge underscore Bright with double S underscore. That's my main, main account. And yeah, I post pretty much um, fitness content 
uh, evidence-based fitness content. And yeah, you can me give me a follow there. Yes, go follow him. You're going to get some value. And uh, dude, thanks again. Thank you all for listening. I appreciate you all for checking out episode 54. We'll see you in the next one. Thanks for having me, David.